Hello and welcome back to another episode of D Sets and 10 minutes less with the Mirage 2000. This is episode 14, which will be going over setting up the radar for air to air mode. Uh, just a side note, if I seem annoyed in this video, it's because I phoned up three times. Each time I had an audio issue, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Before we get started, let's go over the radar intro. The Mirage 2000C has a RDI radar, which stands for Radar Doppler Interception. It's a multi mode, high PRF pulse Doppler radar. The main purpose of this radar is to detect and track air targets at long range. It can also track targets flying as low as 30 meters. The radar can also do air to ground ranging for air to ground weapon delivery, as well as low altitude navigation with ground mapping and train avoidance modes. Some specs maximum detection range will be 80 nautical miles, 65 nautical miles against fighters. Gimbal search limits will be 110 elevation, so 110 uh, degrees of up and down play. Then 120 degrees of azimuth, so left and right play. Now we're going to go over setting up the radar for air to air mode. The search pattern depends on two parameters one, our bar search, and two, our azimuth width. These are also controlled in the radar control panel, which we have gone over before. Here's our bars, and here's our azimuth width. We're going to talk about bars first. So think of the bar numbers as how fast your radar can scan a small airspace. A smaller airspace means a faster scan rate, which means a faster detection and refresh rate. By default, it's going to be at 4. Uh, 4 is going to take a longer time since it has to do a bigger search. 2 and then 1. 1 will be a very quick search compared to 4. I personally mine a 4. If anything, I put it down to 2. It just depends on the clutter. Uh, also, if you're between 2 and 4, the bars will overlap each other in a vertical coverage, which can result in duplicate contacts. So if you have one contact on there, you might have like a trail of contacts right behind them, just depending, depending on your uh, filters. All right, then right here we have our asthma selector. So this is going to be how wide of an area we're scanning. So by default, it's going to be at 60 degrees. You can select between 30 and 15. So here's 60. Here's 30, and that's going to be based off your TDC slew. Here's 15. Also, something kind of cool. So right here, that tick, that's indicating where the radar is currently sweeping at. Right here in the center, this 4, that's indicating what bar we're searching at. So we're searching at 4 bar right now, and this is also going to be uh, elevating as we uh, elevate or depress our antenna. Also, this bar right here is indicating where which process the scan is going through. So every time this ticks over a side, for all uh, bars minus 1 bar, you'll see the process go, it goes through. So now it's just restarted. It's kind of cool. Alright, now we're going to go talk about ranges. Alright, so right here we have our range selector switch. So plus to gain range, minus to come back on range. So we can select the yeah, we can select the ranges between 10, 20, 40, 80, 160, and 320 nautical miles. If you guys are selecting between 160 and 320 nautical miles, 160 or 320 nautical miles, you will not receive any radar contacts as it's intended for the do track, which is the false uh, track that we make with the radar display to intercept, which is what we did in the last video. So it's just scan between uh, 10 and 80 nautical miles, and you guys will find contacts. All right, let's go over to the IFF selector switch. All right, right here's the IFF selector switch. You have off, you have section scan, then you have your azimuth scan. So if you go to section scan, wherever your TDC is at, you get a 20 degree azimuth scan of your IFF. You do full whatever azimuth that you have selected, you'll get a full azimuth scan. Now there's no benefit or disadvantage between using either or, it says user preference. Alright, let's go over the uh, symbology for it. Alright, so the dashed line means the IFF is in progress. The solid line is indicating that the IFF is complete, so it only takes half a second for it to complete. All right, that diamond right there that just popped up, that diamond is indicating that friendly IFF uh, beacon or transponder has responded. So we know he's friendly and this guy is not friendly. All right, so let's actually go over locking targets. So let's say we have a scenario, we have two targets moving towards us. We don't know who's friendly, who's hostile, but now we know that he's friendly, so we're gonna lock him up and get some information off this guy. 
Also, if you notice uh, the contact right behind him, that's that duplicate contact I was talking about. Alright, so this is some serious contact, so I'm going to put it in A mode, which is just going to help uh, declutter false contacts. Alright, now I got some information off of him. So if you notice, I went from 4 bar to 1 bar now. So whenever you lock a target, the Mirage's radar defaults to 1 bar. Uh, whenever you unlock the target, it will go back to whatever you had before, so 4 bar. Alright, I locked him up, so we know he's going 0.6 Mach. His bearing is 249. Our closure speed between him and myself is 908 knots. And then he's at 5,000 feet altitude since this is in hundreds of feet. We also know he's at 26 nautical miles from me, and that this little arrow right here, he is coming directly towards me. Alright, so right now we're locking him in PID, which is TWS, which I like to think is a silent lock, so he doesn't know we're locking him right now. But if I switch it to uh, PIC, or PI, or not PIC, sorry, yeah, PIC or STT, like this, or the HOTAS command, you get some more information. So this is now an STT lock, so this is a hard lock, so now he knows we're locking him. We know he's a MiG-29, and we know that he's not a friendly, so he's a hostile MiG-29. I'm going to switch it back to uh, TWS. Alright, now I'm going to unlock him, and then we're going to get our bars back. Back to 4 bar. Alright, hopefully this video is useful for you guys. I'll see you on the next one.